Hey kids, welcome to a homework video for lesson 16 in module five. And so I wanna talk a little bit about what's happening here with these trapezoids. If you take a look at the problem set, um, because of course doing the homework, you should have already done the problem set. Uh, you had the opportunity to draw with um, a ruler, hopefully, or some kind of straight edge. And, and it's all about the attributes that a trapezoid has. So it's about these parallel lines and then uh, where the perpendicular, perhaps, or the intersecting, perhaps, lines cross that one pair of parallel lines. So a trapezoid, you really have to understand what it is so that you can use the grid to make your shapes. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral, and we have to be able to identify it by the attributes. So please understand this. A trapezoid has to have at least one pair of parallel sides. It's a quadrilateral, meaning it has four sides. Lateral means side, quad four, with one pair of those sides being parallel. The others, it's not specified. Since it's not specified, you can do a few things with it. So for the first one, it says you have to make a trapezoid with exactly two right angles. So go ahead and use your straight edge to draw. And you can make it, it can be any size you want. So I'll go from two in to two in. So I've got uh, this point here and this point here. Yours can be wider if you want or, or narrower. It's easier if you make it a little bit big though. And so if I have to have two right angles, first of all, I need to have the other parallel line. So I can go up from here. It can be any height. Okay, if this is my base, I can go, I can have my trapezoid here. I can have it here, 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 here. So I'm just gonna draw another line up on top. Okay, and I'm gonna make it kind of long. Okay, you can ignore that. Uh, the edges, we don't have to have an end for that. I want to show you why. So I always kind of start out with some long lines and then we'll talk about what the, the issues are. What do we have to do? Now I have to have two right angles. So if I have to have at least one right angle, then look at when I put my straight edge across these parallel lines. Now remember, if these lines are parallel, I'm going to get it different color for you guys so you can see it. Okay, this one's my finished line. So I'm going to make it orange. Okay. To here and here. And then my top line, now this is parallel to this, but I need to have right angles. So as soon as you make one line that crosses both parallel lines, you will create right angles. Look, okay, just because I'm going to create a line here or here, I will have a right angle here and here. So when you cross it, you're making these perpendicular lines that I'll use a blue pen this time. And so I want to connect my two parallel lines, okay? Now, this one is perpendicular to both. Now, I know I haven't made this orange yet, and I will, but I want to show you why I haven't done that yet. Because if I have my right angle here, and I have my right angle here, then I have two right angles. So the trapezoid can then look a little bit different and you can have a slanted line that goes anywhere. I could connect it here, I could connect it here, I could connect it here. It can look like any of these. All of these would be trapezoids, all of them. And so the important thing to understand is first of all, my Parallel lines are in orange, okay? And if this is my pair of parallel lines, then, and I've got my one uh, perpendicular line to create the two right angles, the other side doesn't matter how you draw it. You could draw it here, you could connect it here, you could connect it all the way over to here, as long as you have 
part of this side, you have a quadrilateral. And a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So we can finish it off with any of these lines, and it's not gonna be parallel, so I'm not gonna make it blue, but we'll just wrap this one up with a little bit of a darker line right there and call that our trapezoid, okay? Four-sided figure with one pair of parallel lines. This one is asking for two right angles. So that's why that one looks like that. Yours could look similar. Now this next one says a trapezoid with no right angles. So we're going to do the same thing across the bottom. Okay, you can decide where you want uh, it to be. I'm gonna take it out a little further. Okay, and I have to have a parallel line to this one. Okay, I need another orange line that's parallel. Let's make this one a little shorter. Okay, so I'm not gonna go up quite as tall. And I'll go in about three. Now, I don't have to have any right angles. I am not supposed to have any. So you can finish off by closing out these, and it doesn't have to be regular. You can go across two, you could go across three. I could have a trapezoid with this, okay? It doesn't have to be regular. So this could be my trapezoid all in here, or you can have a full one. It doesn't have to match on both sides. On the back, you're gonna have an opportunity to make an isosceles trapezoid, and that is going to be the regular one where you would, if you continued the sides, create an isosceles triangle with two sides the same length. But on the front, you don't have to do that. Okay, now for the next section, we're sorting uh, quadrilaterals into trapezoids and non-trapezoids. So if you look, these are supposed to be trapezoids and these are supposed to be non-trapezoids. The definition of a trapezoid, keep it handy, is a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. If it has at least one pair of parallel sides, then I have to be able to determine what is parallel. So you can use, if you wanna use a ruler, you can use a ruler. If you wanna use a protractor, you can use a protractor. And you're looking for those parallel sides. So I'm gonna use, um, I was gonna use a pen. I think I'm gonna use a pencil, colored pencil so it doesn't bleed through. So I'm looking for the sides that are parallel. So this side is parallel to this side. So it's a trapezoid. Doesn't really matter what the sides are doing. I have a pair of parallel sides, okay? This side is parallel to this one. So since these are parallel, doesn't matter what the other sides are doing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. How about these? Okay, and again, you're looking at it and for the most part, the printing in the book is trying to show you that um, it, they're not trying to trick you, okay? So these are the parallel sides, and this is not parallel to that. It's still a four-sided figure, so it's a trapezoid. This is parallel to this, okay? And this is not parallel to this, but it's still four-sided. Now you look at this one and you go, okay, if this is parallel to the, no, it would have to be going this way. How about this one? Is it parallel to this one? No. And so you're gonna circle the shape that's in the wrong group and tell why they're sorted incorrectly. And this has no parallel sides. Okay, and so that needs to go into the non-trapezoid group. And how about this one? Non-trapezoids would be something without um, a pair of parallel sides. But this not only has a pair of parallel sides, it has two pairs of parallel sides. If it has two pairs of parallel sides, in order to get to two, it had to have one. So the one pair of parallel sides is good enough to call it a trapezoid. Even though it's a rectangle, and you could say, well, this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, but if I have one pair, it's good enough, okay? How about this one? This is not parallel to this, Okay, and this is not parallel to this. How do you know it's not parallel? Well, you can extend each of these and see that eventually it's going to cross. If eventually it's going to cross, that counts as not parallel. Okay, parallel lines will never cross. And so this is a non-trapezoid, okay? 
But these other two seem to be parallelograms, which have at least one pair of parallel sides. Okay, we only have to identify one, so this needs to go over into the trapezoids. And this is a square, which is a trapezoid and a parallelogram and a rectangle and a rhombus and a quadrilateral and a kite. It's all the things. And so this would be a trapezoid. So uh, the ones that go into the other category, you're going to say uh, these have these have one pair or more of parallel sides. And so that's why they belong in the trapezoid category, okay? Now, what tools would be necessary to use to verify? If these shapes were a little bit bigger and we didn't have such a gigantic tool, what would, be, what would we use to verify the placement of all the trapezoids? So the tools you can use if you extend the lines and you measure angles, you can use a protractor, okay, because you could extend and you could show that, say, hey, these are going to cross. You can use a ruler like I did here to extend the lines and show that, yes, they will be intersecting. Um, you can also, let's say you don't have uh, that and you can call it a straight edge. If you have a piece of binder paper, binder paper, um, the corner, the corner of a piece of binder paper, I'll just stand up real quick and get you this. If you look at the corner of a piece of binder paper, you can kind of determine what at what angle things are um, crossing or not, or if they're parallel a little bit, you can kind of see how those angles go. It can help you identify the right angles in rectangles and squares. So you just stick that right in the corner and then you should be able to see that, uh, that it's a right angle. So a protractor, ruler, straight edge, binder paper, uh, corner, there's this little thing called a set square. Most kids don't have one. If your school supplies it, that's awesome. But if they don't, don't fret. Okay, now on the back here, you have the opportunity to use a straight edge to draw an isosceles trapezoid on the grid paper. So an isosceles trapezoid, uh, and I, when I first started teaching this, I was like, wait, what? I haven't done fifth grade geometry in many years. So what do they want? And it's basically just uh, two sides, the same length that would fit into a, an isosceles triangle. But we have to make it a trapezoid, so it's a quadrilateral. So if, again, use the grid and count and be precise. I'm going to be two in from the edge, so two in from the edge. Connect these two points with a line segment. And it's kind of hard to see. In fact, that's pretty much impossible to see. So I'll use a pen. In fact... If this black one doesn't work well for us, I will change and use a different color. There you go. Okay, that works better. So, um, so you want to have your pair of parallel sides. So let's take our ruler, and we'll go up to another pair of lines. And I want to go in an exact amount because it can't be wonky like the other one on the previous side. So I'm going to go in two, and I'm going to put a dot here, and I'm going to go in from this corner two lines, and I'm going to connect between the two lines on the line. Now I have my parallel lines. Now here is where you can uh, see eventually that your lines would cross. So I'm first going to make my trapezoid, okay? And so close it off. It's your four-sided figure, okay? So that's your isosceles uh, trapezoid. Again, count. Use the grid to count. I'm in two. You can go up any number you like and then go 
in. It can't be on the same line. It has to be in one or in two or in three as long as you end up with um, at least two squares in the middle. If you're off by one, it won't be isosceles, okay? So if it has to be exact. Now, what do you mean by isosceles? Well, if I was to continue this line, okay, it would go on up here like so. And if I was to continue this line, it would go on up here like so. Okay, so this would be the triangle, and you don't have to have it extended out if you don't want. I just wanted to make sure it crosses. What you're creating is a triangle that has two sides the same length, which are here, okay, and one side that is different, so that is isosceles, and isosceles uh, triangle has two sides the same length. You can take your centimeter ruler and get kind of more of an exact measurement, very close to eight centimeters, and that's for this whole side, and then this whole side would be eight centimeters too. Okay, yep, about eight centimeters. And so what you'll notice on various tests or things, uh, assignments, computer programs, they'll put these little lines like that saying this side matches this side, but this side does not match those two sides. And so that's what it means by isosceles. It's two sides. This is when they talk about a triangle that's isosceles. Two sides are the same length. And then that third side is different. It could be a super skinny, narrow, tall triangle, or it could be like a pennant flag looking thing. Um, but anyway, this is the isosceles trapezoid. So it has to be that regular matching, perfectly offset. Be neat, take the time, be careful. Why is this shape called an isosceles trapezoid? Uh, if you, first of all, let's, if you extend the non-parallel sides and click subscribe, come back again. I'm going to try to help you guys out with some educational math videos and some other stuff too. So click subscribe and come back again. If you extend the non-parallel sides, you'll create... And isosceles, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E triangle. Okay, so that is one reason that it works out. Um, the two angles that you create down here are the same. Okay, so the two bottom angles are the same. Angles are the same. Sorry, kind of sloppy. Whoo, rushing through. Um, and so therefore these two obtuse angles are going to be also equal to top obtuse angles will also be equal. Okay, so lots of good information in there. I hope this is helpful, and we will see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.